again. Welcome to the fourth and final lesson of the Classic Bootcamp. In this lesson, we will cover the Classic Python package, or the Classic SDK. This is the final bit of the Classic platform, and by the end of this lesson, you'll be fully capable of unlocking the power of Classic by yourself. The Classic SDK is another way of interacting with the Classic platform, and especially, as we will see, it is mainly useful for designing your own novel quantum applications and algorithms in the form of quantum models. So let's get started. From the top right corner of the Classic Platform homepage, you can access the user guide. Find the Getting Started tab. It will help us out. In this lesson, we will work with Google Colab, as it requires no local installations. But of course, you can use your favorite Python SDK. After copying the line that installs the Classic package, paste it into the Google Colab code with a prefix of an exclamation mark to indicate that it's not a Python line, but a terminal line of code. After letting the Colab install the package, click the Reset Runtime button. This is only needed in Google Colab. Now the installation is finished, we need to authenticate the Python environment so the Classic platform will connect our Classic account to the Python package. This is done by importing the Classic package and directly authenticating it in the Python notebook. An authentication link will open up, and once you have clicked it, you will need to confirm the device. That's it, now we're ready to go. From the platform's homepage, we can again access to the user guide on the top right. In the user guide, we have the tutorial section, and on the right, we can see the list of tutorials. We will focus today on the arithmetic tutorial. In this algorithm, we want to currently add two quantum states that are in a superposition of two numbers. We have A, which is in a superposition of 0 and 3, and we have B, which is in a superposition of 1 and 2. We want to receive the current sum of A and B, which is the superposition of all possible sums, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, 3 plus 1, and 3 plus 2. Of course, these are quantum states, so we have some entanglement between the different registers. That means that we can't just receive the sum A plus B, but we will get a superposition of the corresponding state of A, the corresponding state of B, and the corresponding sum. For example, one component of the final state will be 0, 1, 1, to indicate that A is in the state 0, B is in the state 1, and the sum is in the state 1 as well. Before we define our model in the SDK, let's see how a final circuit actually looks like. We can do so by loading the arithmetic tutorial from the pre-built models we have in the synthesis page in the IDE. After synthesizing the model, we receive this circuit. This is a quantum circuit synthesized out of the same model that we are soon going to build in the SDK. So, what do we have here? We have a state preparation building block that prepares the state A. We have a state preparation building block that prepares the state B. We have an adder building block that currently adds these two quantum registers together. And we have the outputs of the adder. We have A that remains the same, we have B that remains the same, and we have the sum A plus B. We can also zoom in and see how the Classics Synthesize engine chose to implement the three building blocks we have. After seeing what it is supposed to look like, let's design and build the model with the Python SDK. The model is the same model that we see in the synthesis page in the IDE, from which we just generated the circuit. Let's go back to the tutorial and understand how to build it. There are four simple steps. First, we need to define our functional building blocks. In our example, there are the state preparation for A, the state preparation for B, and the adder itself. Next, we define the high-level functional model. Then, we wire our building blocks into the model. Lastly, we need to define how to execute the quantum algorithm. In other words, define what we want to do with the quantum algorithm. Do we want to sample the output, or do we have parameters we want to optimize in a hybrid way? In this example, we just want to sample the output and receive some histogram of the measurements. OK, so let's open our Python notebook and the tutorial itself side by side and do it together. We start with step one, where we define the building blocks. Firstly, we define the two state preparations we have. We first define the probabilities of the states we want to generate, and then we define the two state preparation building blocks. For each of them, we input what probability vector we want to prepare and what is the error bound we allow. Next, we initiate the adder object. We need to define what is the size of the adder input register as the left and right arguments. That's all we need for step one of defining the building blocks. And we can now move to step two where we define the model. It's a simple, we just initiate one instance of the model object. 
The third step is to wire our building blocks into the model. First, we wire the state preparation objects into the model with the corresponding building blocks we defined in step one. We call the outputs of the wiring A and B correspondingly, while we are using them as the inputs to the wiring of the adder itself. The last step, step four, is to define the execution scheme. In Classic, the sample execution scheme measures all relevant qubits and produces a histogram. In order to apply the execution scheme, just write model.sample. That's it. Now the Python object called model encapsulates everything we need about our algorithm. However, the input to Classic Synthesis Engine is a model in a different format called QMode. This QMode is just a text file describing the entire model in a way that Synthesis Engine can understand. So, in order to generate our circuit, we need to transform the Python model object into a QMode. This is done with a getModel method. Now we have our QMode. These kind of QModes, which are the input to the Synthesis Engine, are exactly what we've seen in the IDE. Now we finally understand how we can generate them. In the next video, we will complete our understanding of how to work with the SDK, and we will cover all the interfaces between the SDK and the IDE. Welcome to part two of lesson four of the Classic Bootcamp. In the last video, Tali showed us how we can build models with the Python SDK, and we finished with having a QMod, the model in format that enters the Classic Synthesis Engine. In this video, we want to review how to make the connection between the Classic IDE and the Python SDK, and to understand what these interfaces are. So let's get started by going back to where we finished in the last video, and this is with the QMod itself. The first thing we can do is to copy the QMod we have received, which is just a text file the Synthesis Engine can understand, and to paste it in the Synthesis page of the Classic platform. These are the models that we've been seeing for the last few lessons in the IDE. After synthesizing the model, we receive the quantum circuit we wanted. We get two state preparations and the other. Great, so this is the first interface between the Python SDK and the Classic IDE. Just copy and paste, the simplest way that can be. There is another way of interfacing the QMod from the SDK to the IDE, and it's done by saving the QMod as a file and uploading it directly to the synthesis page. This is done by firstly saving the QMod into a file in our notebook. Then we need to get access to the file itself by downloading it locally to our computer. Now in the synthesis page, we have a button for uploading a QMod. We just select the QMod, and we have our QMod in the IDE, just like copying and pasting. Now we can synthesize the model, and as expected, we receive the same circuit. So these are two ways of loading the QMod from the SDK to the IDE. Now I want to continue one step further within the SDK, and to synthesize the model directly within it. This is done by inputting the synthesis function in Python, and then synthesizing the QMod. The output of the synthesis is the quantum program, the QPROG, which contains the circuit itself in addition to other things like the execution scheme of the model. But it's not very indicative to view it like this, as a string, so we have again two ways of interfacing with the ID. First, we can directly open the circuit contained within the quantum program with the function show. This will give us a link to the platform where we can view the circuit as if we synthesize it directly within the ID. Another way of interfacing the quantum program is by saving it into a file and directly uploading it to the IDE, as we did before with the QMod. For this, we need again to have a local access to the file. Now, when we go back to the platform, to the circuit page, we have a plus button next to the circuit names. Once we click on it, we will have the option to drag and drop our quantum program or to upload it. Then the quantum circuit, which is contained within the quantum program, can be opened and viewed as usual. So to summarize, we have seen two ways of interfacing the QMod from the SDK to the IDE, either copying and pasting in the synthesis page or saving it as a file and loading it. And we've seen two ways of interfacing the QPOG, which contains the circuit, with the show function, which opens a direct link to the IDE, or by saving the quantum program as a file and uploading it to the circuit page. Two additional points before we finish the session. To the circuit page, you can also directly upload CASM files. So if you are working with Qiskit, for example, and you want to use Classic for visualizing the circuit or for executing it, you can directly upload CASM files, which is really nice and useful. The second thing is that when working on long projects, it might be convenient to save both the QMods and the QPROGs while you work. In this way, you don't need to resynthesize your models or to generate new models each time. 
You have all your files ready and you can return to the point you stopped working at with one simple click. Thank you. Welcome to the last video of the Classic Bootcamp. In this final episode, we want to touch on a more advanced topic that can be really useful for the Classic Quest Hackathon. This is how to incorporate some parameters into our models. We will review two possibilities, two execution schemes. The first is the sample execution scheme. This is the regular measurement and histogram we expect to receive from the execution of a quantum circuit. We will design our model with some parameters and only when we code the execution scheme to the model, we will pass the parameters. The second is an hybrid execution scheme called the VQE. It is originated from the variational quantum eigensolver algorithm, which we reviewed in a previous session. We will use it as a general variational scheme where we will design our model with some parameters and ask Classic to optimize these parameters according to some loss function. So let's start. Our example for both execution schemes will be a simple RY rotation over one qubit. First, we initiate our model. Then we define our building block, which is the RY gate in this case. This gate expects to receive one parameter. And now we will just define the parameter as a string. This will be our variable. Next, we need to wire the building block into the model. And finally, we need to define the sample execution scheme. Here, however, we need to pass to the execution scheme what are the parameters the model should synthesize it with. So we define our execution parameters as a dictionary where the keys, or the key in our case, are the parameters themselves in the form of strings. And the values of the dictionary are the values we want the model to substitute, pi over seven in our case. Then, we define the execution scheme to be sample, as usual, but now we pass to the model the execution parameters to be substituted. And that's it. Now we can continue as usual and to synthesize the model and even to execute it and review the results. So this is the first way to pass parameters into the model. This can be useful if we have some pre-processing to do, some intermediate calculations, or a loop where we want to substitute many parameters within. Let's go ahead to our hybrid execution scheme now. Firstly, we define the RY building block and wire it to the model as before. We still pass it the parameter in the form of the string and we call it X as before. Now comes the cool part. Instead of just sampling the generated circuit, we set the execution scheme to be a VQE. The first thing we need to pass to the VQE scheme is the Hamiltonian we want to minimize its energy, or we can view it as our loss function. We need to pass the Hamiltonian we want to minimize in the form of Pauli list. In our example, we choose the Hamiltonian to be a sum of the z and x powers with the coefficients 1 and 0.1 respectively. Here we can see the Hamiltonian's matrix representation. Next, we need to define in the VQE scheme what's the maximum number of iterations we want to have for our hybrid model. Lastly, we need to choose our classical optimizer. And that's it. Now we can synthesize our hybrid model, execute it, and view the results. Specifically, we can see what is the optimal parameter, which is the optimal angle of rotation for minimizing the Hamiltonian we chose. This brings us to the end of this video, to the end of this lesson, and to the end of this first classic bootcamp. We hope you enjoyed it so far, and that now you have the capabilities to master the classic platform. Don't forget to send your challenges via our community Slack to earn your certificates and to win really cool prizes. The end of this bootcamp marks the beginning of the Classic Quest Hackathon on October 8th. If you followed us in this bootcamp, you have a really good chance of doing cool things in the hackathon and to win substantial prizes. So make sure you don't miss this opportunity. See you all in the hackathon and in the Classic Bootcamp of 2024. Bye bye.